glad you're here. Um, let me tell you a little background. Um, I am Kelly Wayman, and I consider myself a Silhouette super fan. And that is since I got my first machine in 2008. And basically, I love the machines and the software so much that I have been uh, writing and te teaching tutorials and classes ever since. Uh, several years ago, actually four years this summer, uh, I started working directly with Silhouette to create how-to videos on every feature in the Silhouette Studio software and also other helpful topics. So there's, there's over 80 videos, maybe even 100 videos at this point um, that I've done with Silhouette. Um, I've also got full length classes on various machines and materials. So we've cover, we cover vinyl, heat transfer, designing in Silhouette Studio, pick scan, print and cut, uh, you name it, we probably have a class or a video already on it. Um, this, so, and then we've started, I started doing live classes uh, last fall uh, since the pandemic hit. So I actually really like the live classes. And um, I guess my point is that this class is only an hour and there's no way to cover everything there is for a beginner. So we have a lot of resources for you and hopefully I will go, we can have time to go over this again at the end of class, but let me show you something that a few places that you will want to know to reference for the future uh, if this class doesn't quite cover everything you wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And let me show you um, if you are on YouTube, you want to go to Silhouette Inc. You can see right here what it looks like. You want to subscribe to this or this is the channel you want to be watching if you need information on how to use your machine. So a couple of the playlists that are good. Let's see, I'll just go to playlists. And live classes, this is where this class will be if you wanna watch it later. Um, right here, Silhouette 101 video classes, view full playlist. This has full length classes for all of the materials that you would wanna cut. It also has classes on 3D printing and the mint, but uh, this, if you, really wanna dig in and find out how to do a certain type of, use a certain type of material, these classes are here for you. Um, let's see, I'll go back to the Silhouette main page. And if you're just looking at videos, this will show you the most recent that videos that were loaded. And there's a lot of good information there for you. Okay, another place that you want to check is the Silhouette blog. And that is silhouette101.com. So if you're on the Silhouette blog, there are tons of posts. So a lot of inspirational posts, a lot of tutorials. Um, if you are looking for something to get started, so right under the header, you can click on this little get started button and you can see product information. Here's where you'll access manuals if you need an unboxing video. Uh, over here in the middle section, there's tutorials. So you can see eBooks, um, software how-tos, projects by materials. So this will pull up uh, blog posts using these materials. And then videos, this again, over here in classes, will get you to that same list of classes uh, and this is all using the existing software of Silhouette Studio. It doesn't actually matter what machine you're using. Silhouette Studio runs all of the Silhouette cutting machines. Okay, and the third resource you have is SilhouetteAmerica.com. And this will show you um, all sorts of things. You can, you can find out what machines are available, what products are available. Uh, I wanna show you here the software tab at the top. This is where you're going to update your software. You're gonna make sure that you get the most current version. So if you click on software and desktop software, 
it's going to show you your Silhouette Studio software by default. And the current version is the one that you want. Now, some of you, this current version was just updated this week. And so 4.4.552 is the version I'm gonna be using today. And you're generally safe to go with whatever the current version is. There are some legacy versions down here that generally if Silhouette support, if you reach out to them and they tell you maybe to go back to a legacy version, um, you, can, you can find that here. Now there's a hidden little gem on this software page and it is below all these Silhouette Studio versions. Right here, it says click here to see feature comparisons for all editions. So there's more than one way to get to this chart, but this is usually where I get to it from silhouetteamerica.com slash software, and then click here to see feature comparisons for all editions. So if you're wondering, you know, what, what does the software do? These are the things the software will do. And then, and so that's the basic edition is what you would start out with. And then these other things on the side, designer edition, designer edition plus and business edition, those are upgrades that you can pay for an upgrade that will unlock features in your Silhouette Studio software. And once you've paid for that upgrade, you are upgraded forever. So any, any further updates that come, any new software features that come with that upgraded version, uh, that's going to go along with your software. If you've paid for the upgrade once, you only pay for it once and all future updates cover those features. Now on the left-hand side here, these are um, features that if you're not sure how to do something, almost all of these have a video linked to it. So if you don't know what object on path is, you can click this little video icon and it'll take you straight to a video describing object on path or offset or uh, print bleed. All of these have a, a video you can reference. So um, that's just something I want you to keep in mind that I won't be able to cover all of these features, but there's a video for nearly all of the features that are in Silhouette Studio software. All right, if you don't already have a Silhouette machine, here are your choices. We're still on silhouetteamerica.com. And if you go to shop and machines, these cutting machines are where you can compare the features. So the Silhouette Portrait is a little bit smaller. The Silhouette Cameo um, is the one I'm gonna be using today, Silhouette Cameo 4. But if you click the learn more button, that'll take you to all the different sizes of Silhouette Cameo. and so. And then of course the Curio, the Alta and the Mint. Um, this will let you compare what machines if you don't already have one or if you're considering getting a new one, if you uh, are, are ready to upgrade to a newer machine. Okay, when you start with Silhouette, you're gonna need to set up an account. So you would use the same email address for silhouetteamerica.com and the Silhouette Design Store. And that also will be your login for Silhouette Studio to access your uh, library or share your library through the cloud to maybe multiple computers you're using. Um, I showed you where to download the software at silhouetteamerica.com and software, let's see, desktop software. And then if you go to support, if you ever need help, you can go to silhouetteamerica.com support and you can, you can get help. That'll take you to uh, how to get the, to the contact or either the email address or the chat. Um, frequently asked questions, machine setup. So if you go to machine setup and continue this, if you've never set up a new account or if you haven't registered your machine, this is where you can do it. Um, and so I guess if there are questions about that, you can ask me, but I just wanted to show you that briefly um, to get started. So now let's move into Silhouette Studio software. Now, this is your main design page and it opens blank and it may be 
really exciting to have a new page with nothing on there, or it may be really intimidating. So I'm going to try and take the scariness away from, from having a new software that's just open with all these buttons. Okay, so I'm working in basic edition. So you, if you ever upgraded to a uh, more advanced edition like designer edition or business edition, you'll have a few more icons, but I'm gonna work just with basic edition today, keeping it simple. There are four main sections on this page. So on the left, you've got tools. Um, you've got your select button, which is this little arrow here on the upper left. That is um, basically your default that you wanna be able to keep going back to. Uh, if you use some other tool over here on the left and it stays activated, you can just click this little arrow and get your arrow button back. And it's called the select button because this is what will allow you when you see the little arrow icon, this is what allows you to select things on your page that are already open. Um, over here on the right-hand side, you've got, on the upper right, you've got four tabs. So we are on the design tab, and this is where you do your designing. There's also the store. So if you click the store button, that is going to open the Silhouette Design Store. And what you can do here is pick and choose the designs that you want to buy. So, you know, this, this changes over time. So if you're watching this class six months from now, it might look slightly different, but basically you can pick and choose any design you want. So just one at a time, you can, there's, there are bundles if you want to buy bundles. Um, one of the great things is right here on deals in the design store, if you go to free designs and click on that, every Tuesday, there is a free design of the week that Silhouette will release. And I have not actually purchased this yet. So let me go ahead and show you how you purchase a design. So I'm just gonna click on the design and I can see more details about this. This says for design type, it's a print and cut design. And if I want that, I can just click the little cart button and that will add it to my cart. And now if I click the little arrow button, it will take me to checkout. Or if I wanna keep browsing and adding more things to my cart, then when I'm ready, I can click over here in my cart in the upper right corner and it will show me what's in my shopping cart. Um, so I'm just gonna go with this one design that I've got and I have a subscription. So um, this design is gonna be covered by the credits for my subscription. So I'm gonna click checkout and just type in my password cause I've already got an account set up. And wait for a second while that loads. Okay, so it says these files have been added to your library or just the one file. And so now if I go back into Silhouette Studio, um, I'm gonna be able to find this design and that all of my designs are in my library. So I'm gonna click on this library tab and this is gonna open all of my designs. Now over on the left, I have created a whole bunch of subfolders. And when I buy designs, I'll go through and put these into subfolders. But what you're looking for on something that you have just purchased is the folder called recent downloads. So if I click on that, I can actually find, oh, it's syncing right now. It's syncing that design I just bought. And so I'll just give it a minute. When it's done syncing, that heart design that I just purchased will be here in my uh, recent downloads folder of my library. Okay, here it's loading right here. All right, and then to open a design, you just double click on it. 
Um, right now it's got a friendly little reminder that um, it's a print and cut design. So it's going to let me turn on, on print and cut marks automatically. So I click continue that will turn those on. I don't need those right now. And so, cause, cause I'm just gonna uh, move on to a blank screen. I just wanted to show you really quickly how to actually get a design from the design store and open designs. So I'm gonna open a new document. And the quickest way to open a new document is this little plus symbol over here by these open documents. Uh, you can also go to file, new, or there's this little icon on the left that says new drawing, um, but I just click this little plus. So there's multiple ways most of the time to get to the same end result. We have a question. Yes. So Ann Saunders asked, um, why does her Silhouette Studio have a grid when she opens it? So can you go over the grid? Sure. So the question is why would you have a grid on your page when you open it? So a grid is a really helpful tool that is found in the second tab of the page setup panel. So your page setup panel will automatically open every time you open a new document. And so the second tab is for grid settings. And if you click on that, and there's this little checkbox that says show grid. My grid is not very dark because I've set it to be kind of faint, but down here you can make it darker if you want to. I find it distracting myself, so I like to keep it a little bit faint, but that's your show grid. You can toggle that on and off. The other thing you can do is just hit the letter G on your keyboard, and that will also See, I'm getting a little bit slow response time. If you hit G on your keyboard, that should turn your grid on and off. And it doesn't seem to be working. So I'll talk to the software people about that. So if you want your grid on or off, just the second tab for show grid. You also can see your grid of your mat. If you're on the page setup panel, my grid is off right now. But if I slide this transparency slider, I can make that white overlay disappear and that will make my grid of my cutting mat show up. So that's another thing that people like to use um, to show their grid to see their exact placement is to use that transparency slider. I'm gonna go back to zero transparency because I wanna see the whole thing. Okay, so we talked about these tabs, the design, the store, the library. We will get to the send tab later. Um, I wanna keep going over a couple of these tools on the left, the things that you're likely to use the most. So there was the select. This one is for drawing lines, it's called line tools. If you hover over it, it will pop out your various line options. So straight line, um, polygon, curved polygon, draw an arc. We actually have videos for all of those, so I'm not gonna go over that right now. Um, I will show you the drawing tools that come in the basic edition. You've got a rectangle or square, a rounded rectangle, an ellipse for making ovals and circles, and then a draw a regular polygon. So you could um, do a pentagon, a hexagon, a triangle, um, all the way up to something with, with 60 points. But let's just real quickly do like, uh, draw a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to click on that and just click and drag on my screen. And you can see as my as I move my mouse, that changes the shape of this rounded rectangle. And if I hold my shift key while I'm dragging, that will make a perfect square. And the same thing happens with a circle. If you're if you've got the ellipse tool and you're drawing an oval, but you want a circle, if you just hold your shift key, that will make a perfect circle. All right, so there is also text. And in one of our recent live videos, um, McKenna went over the text tool just a little bit, but just know that if you click on this little text button 
and you get a cursor that you can click on your screen and that will get you a little um, flashing cursor button. And so then you can just type what you want. And that's how you get your text tool to work. That's how you add text. Uh, the other thing that when you have something on your screen and you have it selected, or even if you don't have something selected, one of the other things you wanna play with is clicking your right click button on your mouse and you get some quick pop-ups. So like undo edit is probably going to delete what I just typed or at least one letter. Um, select all, will select everything I've got on my page. If I do something else and say I select these two shapes and then I do a right click, you can see I've got a whole bunch of other options that show up. So a right click is a really handy tool um, that brings up quick menu options for you. And like I said, there's usually more than one way to do things and a right click is often your fastest way to do something. All right, now let me go over something really quick in preferences with you. This is um, maybe not what you would consider a beginner, but I think it's important because if your screen is behaving differently than mine, um, then you might get a little confused. So in the, the way I like to get to preferences is down the very lower right-hand corner of your Silhouette Studio screen. If you hover over it, this little gear icon, the little tooltip will pop up that says open preferences panel. So I'm gonna click that. And these things are basically to change how you prefer your software and your tools to behave. And so I'm going to go to the defaults tab and let me show you cut to edge of page. Um, I like to have this box checked for cut to edge of page. And let me move this window over and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can see my screen a little bit. So cut to edge of page is a choice on your page setup panel. So I'm looking at the page setup panel over here on the upper right corner. And down at the bottom, it says show cut border. Now, if you have cut to edge of page in your preferences not checked, I'll click apply. So you can see I've got this little red border that shows up. Basically this is well, it is your cut border. When you have objects inside this cut border on your page, the machine is able to cut them. If you move something outside of your cut border, it will not cut them. So this cut border is important. And I really like to, um, with cut to edge of page, it will drag it. It will give me all of the cut area available. So I've got this, cut border showing, you can see it's inset just a little bit on the white border. If I check cut to edge of page and click apply, it kind of looks like it disappeared, but it's actually there. So I'm gonna click okay. And look again at my page setup panel. So let's say I want to change my media size to letter size. Um, and then let's go to transparency. There's that cut border. And I've got it so it's going to cut all the way to the edge of my page. If I turn that off with the show cut border sign, I no longer can see that red cut border. Let me show you how this is helpful um, on the page setup panel to have that box for show cut border. So let's say, I'm going to use no cutting mat. So I'm gonna set my cutting mat to none. And I'm going to set my media size to 12 by 12. So, and actually let's do like a, a print and cut. Oh, actually, okay, so let's see. Yeah, let's turn our registration marks on and say we wanna do a print and cut. 
I want my media size to be letter. And right now it kind of looks like I've got all of this space that I can put my designs in. But if I show cut border, all of a sudden you can see that I don't have all that space available. I need to keep my designs within the cut border. So I like to have show cut border checked and I like to have cut to edge of page. So I've got the full um, range, the full page of my media available to cut. Okay, another thing in preferences, let me, um, yeah, let's go back to preferences, this little gear on the lower right-hand corner. And the other thing that might behave differently if you're just going by the defaults that might uh, show differently for me um, is these tools. So after creating a shape, after drawing freehand using the eraser, this is talking about all these things on the left-hand side and then zoom is up on top. Most of the things I like to choose select. So if I say I'm going to draw a shape, if I have my choice to continue drawing shapes and I click apply and I pick a shape over on the left and I wanna draw a rectangle, that is gonna keep my rectangle tool drawing tool going and I will just Help, help, but how do I get rid of this? You might say, well, you could click your select button and there you go, you're back to your arrow where you can select and don't have to be drawing stuff. Or, and so I don't, I don't like having that one just for me. And so in preferences, after creating a shape, I say, go back to choose select. And so that means after I click apply, that means when I choose a shape, I draw a shape and I let go of my mouse. Now I've got the arrow button and it's not gonna keep drawing shapes. So that's that difference there. Um, and so you can play with these preferences. The, the ones that I have set up mostly are choose select. And then the other thing that I always choose myself um, for preferences is when drag selecting, I want my, um, I want it to select the shapes touching the drag box. So right now that means if I want to select something on my page and I've got my select working, anything my little cursor touches, if it just barely skims it, it's going to select that object. And most of the time, that's what I like. Your other choice is when drag selecting select shapes enclosed by drag box. So what that means, after I click apply, that means I'm gonna do the same motion and I'm going to drag a selection box, but you can see it's not highlighting those, it's not selecting them. It's only going to select something that I completely enclose. So I've got my drag selection that is only completely enclosing the circle here. So that is a choice that you can make in your preferences, whether you want it to select by just barely touching something or whether it um, is better for you to completely surround it with your selection um, to become selected. And there, you it just depends on what you're doing at the time. Sometimes I like it to be limited to only enclosing a shape, but most of the time I keep it select shapes touching drag box. Um, we have a question with preferences. So Teresa asked while, um, so she asked, is there a way to change the default font and font size? So the question is, it, can you change the default font and font size? And that is not a choice in preferences, but you can um, set that when you're working on a project, you can actually set that before you choose a, um, before you start typing your font. Um, so basically it's gonna be, let me just click okay and get out of preferences. When you want to use a font, you can go over here to open the text style panel and we'll see if this works. It's been a while since I've tried this. 
Um, if I choose a font, let's just use something I've recently used. So um, this is Thinkle Bloom, and that is available in the design store. Let's say I want to do um, 144 points. So I've got, I've chosen a font and a font size. And now if I click my text tool and click down, it now has that font typing. And every time I click and start a new font, or a new text box, it's already got that font selected. So also you can change this after the fact. So if you've already typed something and, oh, let's see, I don't want that font. I want a different font and a different size. I can change all that after the fact. So if you know you're gonna be wanting to use a certain font and size, um, you can change it over here in the textile panel before you select your text and start typing. But you, I probably resets with each document you open. So you can't do it in preferences, but that's your fastest way in each document is to choose your font and font size before you start typing. Okay, so let's see, that was what I wanted to cover for preferences. And now let's just go over real quickly over um, some of the things on the top of your screen. So you've got your um, options like file, edit, view, panels, object, help. Those are, those. I think there's just slight differences between a Mac and a Windows, your options up there. Um, I really like to use these icons along the menu bar. So here's your new drawing. So if you wanted to open a new document, you can click on that. Um, you've got open, which will go to open your saved files. Here's where you can save, you can print, you've got cut, copy, and paste. And it may be hard to tell, but obviously you'll see it on your own software. When you are hovering over an icon, a little tool tip will pop up and tell you what that is. And so, you know, if, if you don't know what those scissors mean, it says cut, oh, well, you know what cut is if you're cutting and pasting in um, any other type of doc, any other type of software. That's the same thing in Silhouette Studio. Uh, let's see. Oh, these are your good friends right here the undo and the redo button. So this little um, back arrow, the curved back arrow, that is undo. And you'll use that probably more often than redo. But if you do something that you don't intend to, or you wanna go back one step, um, you can click this little undo button. So that's a great one to know. And if you are familiar with um, shortcut keys in other software programs, control Z or command Z, if you're using a Mac, that is also undo, the same as a lot of other software programs. So if you like keyboard shortcuts, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts um, in Silhouette Studio are the same as in other software programs. Okay, and the last section I wanna talk about up here is your zoom tools. So zoom in, if you just click this once, it'll zoom in a set amount zoom in again, you can zoom out with this little minus sign. Um, one that I really like is drag over shape to zoom. So let me go back to this document where I have some things um, on my page. So you can either click it once and click on your page once, and that will just do a quick zoom to whatever focus point you clicked on. Up here, fit to window, this is how you get back to viewing your full page size. Um, if I click this drag over a shape to zoom again, um, instead of clicking once to a focus point, I can actually surround an object by clicking and dragging with my mouse. I can surround the, the object that I want to zoom into and it'll pop that up to my focus point. Um, 
This little hand button is for pan. So if you click and drag your mouse, this will pan your page around. Um, a shortcut key is to hold your space bar while you click and drag your mouse. I, that's usually how I pan as I hold my space bar. Um, and then this is one of my favorite, zoom in and out using the mouse. If I click on that and I see this little double arrow on my page, if I drag my mouse up, it's going to zoom out really fast. If I drag down, it's going to zoom in really fast. So if you're trying to maybe open a um, design that has really filled your page with a lot of shapes and uh, you can't see them all because you're just looking at that one page, your, your normal page size, you can click that zoom out and drag your mouse up and suddenly you'll be able to see all these other shapes that are off to the side. Okay, another thing we have is the quick access toolbar. So up here below these main um, menu choices, you've got what's called the quick access toolbar. And there are some things that always show. So you've got your fill colors, you've got line colors, and you've got a line style. So if you wanted to choose a solid line or choose from a selection of perforated or dashed shapes, that's where you've got it. And then you've got your line point size. And right now you can see that all the rest of this space looks white, it's blank. But if you choose something on your page, you'll get options that show up there based on what you're allowed to do with what you have selected. So I selected something that has text and all of a sudden I've got some options for um, changing my text, changing my font size, um, a lot of font options. And then I've also got things like um, group and ungroup and send forward and back, align tools. So let's ignore the text and let's select um, these three squares. And this is where I really like this quick access toolbar. This is where I go for aligning my objects. Um, so I can line them up kind of along their middle line and I can distribute the spacing. Didn't change much because they were already pretty even. Um, I can center them together. I love this button. This will center them vertically and horizontally all at the same time if I click that, kind of nests them together. Um, and if I want to take what I've got selected and center it to my page of my document size, I can click center to page. And then group is up here and ungroup is up here and just a lot of really good stuff. And it just depends on what you have selected um, that where which things you have an option for that quick access toolbar is it changes dynamically so it just depends on what you have selected. All right, and then panels panels are where you can get a lot of really intense designing options. Your panels are over here on the right hand side and you will have more things available or these panels will have more options available if you have higher editions of the software. But like I said, we're just using basic edition or standard right now. Um, the most used panel, of course, is going to be your page setup panel. We've already talked about this a little bit, but this is where you're going to choose your machine. So I told you at the beginning that it doesn't matter what silhouette cutting machine you're using. The Silhouette software works the same for all of them. So right here with my machine, I can actually choose a different machine. Say I wanna use, you know, I, I'm going to use a portrait machine. And so I wanna choose the portrait and then I can have certain options for cutting mat. I can use the portrait cutting mat. Um, I can choose none. Like if I'm cutting vinyl or heat transfer without a mat, I've got that choice. Um, you can see that my um, choices are not, I don't have a whole lot of choices when I have my portrait machine selected because it's only going to give you choices for your cutting mat of what you can use with the portrait machine. So if I change my machine to Cameo 
and then I look at my options for cutting mat, I can still use a portrait cutting mat in the Cameo machine. Um, I also can use my 12 by 12 inch cutting mat. I can use a 12 by 24 inch cutting mat. Those are all options when I'm using a Cameo machine. Shall we have some more questions? Okay, more coming. questions. So Anne asked, um, how do I change the color of the font? Mine comes up white. Yes, so we'll answer that real quickly. So if you select your font, you can do things to it like change the color. And so, and I can also, I don't have to work with point size necessarily. I can um, also drag to resize that. So if I select my font, if I want to fill it with a color, the fastest way is to go over here on the quick access toolbar. And if you click this little arrow, you've got all of your color choices. So say I want to turn that green. Um, now my font is green. It's only gonna matter if you are printing your font. Um, if you were to cut this out of some colored material, vinyl or paper or something, the color wouldn't matter. Um, but if you do wanna turn it a color, to either see it better as you're working with it or to print it, so it prints in that color, you've got that option. You also have a fill panel over here on the right-hand side. It's the third panel down, and you've got some more options than just that quick access fill button. You can expand down here to advance, and you can actually pick a custom color by dragging your mouse through all these colors down here. Um, you also can choose gradients. This is its own tab and you can pick a gradient and then you can choose a fill pattern that you can fill it with um, a pattern. And there is a little bit of a lag when you're trying to click this pattern window. So just be patient and in a minute, it will pop up with your pattern options. Okay, there they are. So any pattern I buy in the Silhouette Design Store is going to show up here as an option. So I still have this selected and I've, I've purchased this pattern from the Design Store and that's called Pink Ombre. And even better, let me zoom in here. Right now that's kind of tiny. If I'm over here in my fill, patterns, I can increase the scale so I can change how big that pattern looks. So that's kind of fun. Um, let's see, what other panels? Okay, so we've talked about the page setup panel. Um, I think I covered everything there. You can change your machine, your mat. Let's see, we'll go back to a 12 by 12 mat and your media size. Right now it's at letter, I can choose 12 by 12. And obviously you've got all these other choices. I'm gonna to go to 12 by 12. And down here, I always have checked show cut border. Okay, and then we've also talked about the fill panel. Another one we've talked about is the text style panel. So that's where you're gonna be able to change your fonts and your, and your sizes. You can also change line spacing and character spacing. Um, the transform panel, most of these frequently used things you're going to have access to up in the quick access toolbar, um, but you've got more options as you click through this transform panel, more scale options, more rotate options, more move options. So you've got the basics up here at the top, but this transform panel has all these different tabs that you might wanna go through. Um, to familiarize yourself with, with what's available. Okay, and then the offset panel is another one that you will probably find helpful. Um, that over here, it kind of looks like a star with a border around it. And so if I open my offset panel, that's gonna say I can do an external offset or an internal offset. So offset is going to create a shape around what you have selected. And so like if you wanted to 
um, maybe maybe put this on a scrapbook page and you want a background for it, or if you wanted to do heat transfer and you wanted two layers of heat transfer, um, an offset is a nice way to get an extra layer that's thicker than the original layer. And it will do it perfectly. And you've got this slider button to make it as thick or as thin as you want. Um, anything that's overlapping when you choose the offset is going to weld together when you click apply. So if I click apply right now and I move the original text away, you can see that that has automatically welded itself. So you've got one solid piece that's the right amount of offset. And then you've got an internal offset that will, um, let's say, I'm looking at this little square here. If I choose internal offset, it's going to make um, an internal line that is smaller than the original shape. Okay. So I think those are the most used panels. And like I said, there are videos for every single one of these um, in that feature comparison list that I showed you earlier. So if you hover your tool tip, you know, hover your mouse and say, open the trace panel. So you say, I wanna learn more about trace. Well, that's when you can go to that list and say, what does, you know, trace, what does trace do? What can I do? Um, so that's just kind of, um, play with it. All right, so at this point, do we have any other questions? We're gonna do a quick design so I can show you how to actually cut, um, but do we have any more questions that I need to answer at the moment? Okay, then I'm going to open a new document. So I'm gonna click the little plus icon and let's do something really easy, not scary. Let's just make a bookmark. And so I am going to draw two shapes and weld them together. So let's see, let's do draw any lips. So over here on the left-hand side, I've got my drawing tools and I've gone to draw any lips. And I'm gonna draw, actually let's draw a, a couple circles. So I'm gonna hold my shift key and get a perfect circle. And you're welcome to follow along with me at this point. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of make this up as I go. I'm gonna duplicate this. So up here on the quick access toolbar, I can click duplicate a couple of times. Let's go four times. Um, there's other ways to do this, but that's just a fast way right now. If I drag these circles around and say, I want to um, weld them together. so Obviously with just eyeballing them, I don't have them straight and aligned. So I'm gonna drag my selection box around them. And so they're all selected and I can choose my align tools here at the quick access toolbar. So I want to align middle. That's gonna line them up along their center line this way. And then I want to distribute them or space them uh, horizontally. So I'll click that button and now they're overlap the same amount. So if I want to fuse these together so they become all one shape, I can choose this weld button at the top, weld selected shapes into one shape, or another um, way to weld that I use frequently is to do a right click and weld. And when I click that, those overlapping lines disappeared and this has all become one shape, one layer. <clears throat> and now let's just for fun, let's change the shape just a little bit more to turn this into a bookmark. I've got my rounded rectangle and I can just kind of click and drag to get generally the shape I want. Um, I can even, let me zoom into this. I can even change this corner so if I hold my shift key and click and drag on this little dot, I can change how sharp or curved that corner is. So then I'll release with my mouse and we'll zoom out just a little bit. And again, I want to align this perfectly. 
And instead of clicking align middle and then align center, I'm just gonna click this one button for center and that's gonna align it perfectly um, vertically and horizontally. So now I'll click weld again. And there I've got kind of a, a funky shape I can use for my bookmark. And if I want to resize it a little bit, I can. And since it's a bookmark, I wanna put a little tassel on it. So I'm gonna draw my ellipse again and hold shift and just draw a little circle. And that is about the right size. If I wanna make it an exact size, when I have this selected, I can actually choose this in my scale options. So if I click the lock aspect ratio, the little lock icon, and then say I wanna make it 0.25, I'll just type in 0.25 on my keyboard and hit enter, and that will change it um, proportionately. So it won't stretch it one way or the other. And then, See, I wanna get it about the right distance over here. And then I'll select these two together and this time choose align middle. And that will bring that circle so it's right at the center line. Okay, and then I can group. So you can either right click and choose group or you can choose group on this quick access toolbar or you can hit control G or command G. Um, all those things are ways to group. And so now when I move these, the two shapes will move together. All right, I'm gonna to fit to window. I'm going to use my Cameo machine. My cutting mat is gonna be Cameo. My media size, I'm actually using letter size paper. And so I'm going to choose letter. I like to set my media size um, when I'm working with, with Silhouette Studio. I like to set my media size so it is, um, exactly the size of media I'm using. Okay, so now we get to the send panel. Upper right corner, click send. And then there's a few things you should know on this panel. You've got bold red lines here. That is an indication that this is going to cut. Now I told you before, if your design is in is in within the cutting it within the cut border, then it will be able to cut your shape. If you drag your shape out of the cut border, you can see that that bold red line has disappeared because it's not going to cut. If you were to drag it halfway on and halfway off, you can see this has gone faded. What's going to happen is your blade will cut the part that is on the page in the cut border and the, your blade will actually just lift up at this point and will not cut anything out there. Um, you've got choices. If you don't want to cut something, you can drag it off to the side or over here you can choose no cut and that will turn off the cut line. So you can see that cut has disappeared again. Cut means it will cut everything there Cut edge, since we have that little circle grouped in there, it's going to ignore any of your things that you've got grouped inside or just resting inside and it's only gonna choose the, the outer edge to cut. So these three options over here are really important. Most of the time, well, depending on what you wanna do, um, default is cut and you have your options to change it if you need to. Okay, so let's, um, get the machine connected. So I'm using the Cameo 4. And so right here, it's not giving me choices on like my action and my tool because it's looking for my machine because it's got an auto detect. And so I'm gonna plug in my machine. So I'm gonna use the USB cable. When you are first starting out, um, I recommend working with the USB cable. It does have Bluetooth, um, but just to, as a beginner, I think it's a good idea to start as um, using the, the USB cable. So I'm just gonna plug that into my computer and the power button is on the right-hand side, but it's already powered on. Okay, and so back to the software. 
I want it to find my machine. So down here, if it shows you know, unavailable, it's actually looking for a different machine right now, the last one I had plugged in. So I wanna tell it to look for this current machine. So I'm gonna click on the little um, machine icon down here. And I am looking for the Cameo 4 that says available. And I found it right here. This is the USB choice. If I was looking for Bluetooth, it's got the Bluetooth symbol, but I want the Cameo 4 with USB. It says available. So I'm going to click on that and give it just a second. And now it's detecting my tool. It's thinking, okay, I have not installed my blade. That's why it's no tool detected. So let me show you how to install a blade. Sorry, before we do that, oh, yes. Can we ask a question about the cut lines. Um, so Teresa asked, sometimes my cut lines are thin red lines and sometimes they are thicker. I have not been able to find, or sorry, I've not been able to figure out what the difference is and if it makes a difference when cutting. Okay, so that's a good question. I was gonna kind of skip that because um, I don't wanna run out of time, but that, since you asked, that's a great question. So let me, um, let's look, I'm actually gonna, go to the send panel from this other page that I've got. Let me drag some of these out of the way. Okay, so I just wanna look at these um, squares and text. So then we'll go back to the send panel and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So you can see Actually, it's more pronounced if you're uh, zoomed out, but you can see some of these lines are kind of a, a medium boldness and some of them are really bold. So text by default is set to cut edge. Um, and when you have cut edge selected, that's going to be your bolder cut line. And when you have something set to cut, you can see as I click on these, it changes over here. So the text defaults to cut edge and the shape defaults to cut. So if I select these two shapes together that are overlapping and I choose cut edge, you're gonna get this more bold cut line and it's only going to cut the outer edge of overlapping shapes. So if I were to move one away, you can see that we're separated and now it's overlapping. It's not gonna cut that overlap. And so that is your difference between whether it's dark or medium in, in the bold cut lines. And so if you want it to be still cut, then you can just select it and click over here to cut. Now, the reason that um, cut lines are default to cut edge for text is because if you have like a script font and we'll just change this really quick. Okay, so let's find a script font and go back to the send panel. So you see how that looks really bold. If you zoom in, it gets a little less awkward looking. It's just a visual difference. The blade is still gonna do just one pass um, if you set it up that, that way. Um, but you can see that this text, the S crosses over into the T and the E crosses over into the S. By having it default to cut edge, you don't have to worry about script fonts cutting those little chunks into each other. If I were to choose this as cut, that's gonna cut all those lines and we don't want that. We want it to cut edge and you can see it turns bold. So hopefully that answered that question on why you have different cut lines. 
Okay, let's switch back to the document and that we were working with for the bookmark. And I'll show you how to load the blade. Okay, so I'm using the Cameo 4, um, which has an automatic tool detection. The Portrait 3 and the Cameo 4 have automatic tool detection. So you're not gonna see all of your choices until you have loaded your blade. If you're using an older machine, um, you have to tell it what blade you have installed. So um, a manual blade is one that you have to change the um, depth setting based on the material that you're using. Um, I like the auto blade myself because there's just less to think about. And so I don't have to tell it, I don't have to twist it myself um, to tell it what blade to cut, what depths to cut, that's all gonna be in the software. So in the Cameo 4, I want the flat side to be against the back. I need to make sure that this lever is pulled all the way out. And then I insert my blade, make sure you push it all the way down. There shouldn't be any gap here between um, the blade and the holder for it. So if you need to kind of push together at the same time, so it doesn't slide up. You want that to be completely down before you slide in your, um, your locking mechanism. All right, and let's see. So let's go back into the software real quick. And you can see that now my tool is detected. It knows I've got the auto blade in there. It's going to assume that I want to cut, which I do. And then my material is really the only thing I need to tell it. Um, you can do a test cut and let's see, if we're gonna do a test cut, it's going to cut in the upper left corner. And so I'm just gonna drag my design over to make sure I've got room for the test cut. Um, cardstock textured heavy is my preferred um, basic setting for most paper I'm cutting, um, for most cardstock I'm cutting. And then I will, we can try it at a three, which is the default. Get my paper. If I want to change it, I can. So let's just do a cut, a test cut with it on the default of three and 30 and the sp speed at four. So we'll go back to the main camera. And this is your carrier sheet or your, your little protective layer for your cutting mat. So you have to take that off so your material will actually, your paper will actually stick to the mat. And you want to save this um, protective sheet to always put back on it after you're done cutting so your mat doesn't collect dust or, or animal fur or whatever. Um, okay, now when I'm putting my paper on my mat, I want to I want it to look the same as in the software. So it's always going to have you apply it to the upper left corner of your mat. So the mat itself is two-sided. So it, it could go, it could be fed into the machine either direction with the arrow at either side. But when you are feeding it into your machine, you need to make sure that your media is placed on the mat um, the same as in your software. So I've got my letter size paper on my mat, and then the left edge of my cutting mat needs to get aligned with this guide mark on the Cameo machine. So I'm just going to make sure that is lined up together and press the load button. And back in the software, I'm gonna do a test cut. So what that is just a choice that will use the settings I have. If I click test, it's going to cut a little square and triangle in the upper left corner of my mat. So we'll click test. Okay, so you saw that it did with the auto blade, it did a little tapping motion. That is the auto blade um, setting itself to where you have told it in the software, the settings to use. So I'm gonna unload this. 
and just check my little test cut. And that actually cut really cleanly at the default. Um, I'm using a new sticky mat and a pretty new blade. And so those defaults um, really like new mats and new blades. And you might need to increase your um, thickness, your force settings and your blade settings if you need to. Um, if it's not cutting cleanly, kind of as your blade dulls, you might need to adjust that. And then, um, so, so it's, it's not necessarily going to always be the perfect choice at the default. That's kind of just a starting point. So I'm gonna click load. And if I did need to change where my test cut was, I could use these little arrow buttons to scroll around and reposition where my blade is. So basically wherever your blade ends up is going to be the upper left corner of your test cut. And so I can use these little, um, these little arrow buttons to reposition for a test cut. Um, I'm not gonna do another test cut. I'm just going to unload and load to reset that. Because we wanna cut this bookmark. So it's got my bold red line, so I know it's gonna cut and I'm just gonna click send. It's just doing its little auto blade adjustment and then it'll cut. Okay, and once it goes back to its origin point, I can click unload and I can either peel my bookmark off my mat like this, um, but it might get a little curl to it as I'm, as this mat is pretty sticky. So I'm going to flip it over and peel my paper, or actually peel the mat away from the paper. And that, um, will help you not have so much curl in, in your paper. All right, so I've got this bookmark and we could just put a little bit of a little bit of ribbon. through the hole. That's a really plain bookmark. Um, I've got some other bookmarks that I cut as I was getting ready for the class. I was just experimenting with different shapes. So those were all working with ovals and squares and rounded rectangles. Um, if you cut, if you put text over your bookmark, then you can cut, you know, cut text. But then I added a second layer. I cut the same shape, but without the text in it. So I could glue to the bookmark to kind of make it double sided and have the text show through. But that is basically what I had prepared. So do we have questions on like cutting? We'll see if a couple come in real quick before we end, but right now we don't have any, so. Okay, so then just let me show you real quick again, your resources. You've got YouTube, that is Silhouette Inc. And you've got silhouetteamerica.com that's gonna give you all sorts of help and frequently asked questions and your software. your little um, feature comparisons. So if you wanna know more about any of the tools that I used or um, anything else, you can click on these little video icons. And then of course, silhouette101.com is our blog and just has lots of, lots of good information. So um, any other questions? Okay. Okay. So 
hopefully that was helpful for you as a beginner. And we're going to try and do this once a month if there's interest. So you can either watch the replay and slow it down, pause, go back to the parts you need, or you can tune in again next month and maybe have more questions ready. Um, but I hope that was helpful for you. And I enjoyed having you with me in class. And thanks so much for joining me.